make Jesus glad and the devil mad. Amen. Let's rejoice. Let's just pray over this broadcast. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for this. We, it's What an honor it is to speak through cameras all over the Internet tonight. And, Father, I just thank you for your anointing that's not just here in this room, but that it goes out and it's tangible to each one watching. Lord, we believe in supernatural hearing. So, Father, I just thank you that you've, it's you, it's the Holy Spirit that gives me the utterance to speak and to say the things that they need to hear. Uh, Lord, through your word to illuminate, the eyes of their understanding are enlightened or the illumination happens, Lord, and there's revelation in that illumination. And so they get excited about what they're hearing. And Lord, they get so excited, they share it with others. Father, we just thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our expectation is all and only in the Lord. Amen. And, uh, and so just tonight, I just wanted to preach a message entitled The Secret. You know, how many of you realize that God has secrets hidden hidden for us? They're not hidden from us, but that they can be revealed through spending time with him uh, and through a variety of different ways that we're going to talk about tonight. And so, uh, you know, preparing for this, I was thinking about... uh, you know, we, we have these fancy reels now that come on Facebook or Instagram or however you watch reels. And there's, there's a whole slew of, of uh, hidden rooms and hidden, you know, pantries or whatever in new homes that people are building. They'll just build it behind what, you, what looks like a door. And, you know, it's, it's, really, it's like a shelving unit and, and, the, and it's a secret door and it opens up and, and, uh, or a Murphy door or something slides open. And, uh, and there's this whole extra space. Maybe it's a safe room that's totally, you know, in case somebody breaks in and all their guns and stuff are, are hidden back there. Or maybe, you know, uh, maybe it's like, a, like I was saying earlier, like a pantry or they hide their, uh, their laundry room, right? And so there's all kind of different, different secret spaces that people have. Um, we just um, have a lot of, of cool uh, secret hiding places for things that are valuable in our house all kind of different little cubby things and, and I won't get too de- detailed, but, uh, you know, that's kind of fun, uh, in, in our house. Uh, but you know, if, if, if it's, you know, something that you don't want people to see or something that you want to just not share with anybody, that's just special for you, you're going to hide it. You're going to protect it. And so this, the, the same thing goes, um, you know, uh, all, all of your valuables, you're not going to leave those on your driveway, right? You're not just going to lay those out, all of your expensive jewelry, women, you know, that you might may or may not have. Uh, you're not just going to uh, display that. Uh, it's not going to be laid out on the kitchen table for everybody to see. You're going to protect that. And it's valuable to you. And so things that God has hidden away for others just for you, but you've got to explore and you've got to find them in God and through God and recognize when he's speaking to you. It's not something that you can do in the natural realm. It's something that you must do in the supernatural realm. It's access through the supernatural. I'm just looking here at my computer screen. I see uh, Miss Sheree's watching and Miss Sylvia and Mr. Stephen. Thank you, Stephen, for watching tonight. Miss Henrietta and Gwen and, and Miss Judy. And Karen, thank y'all for commenting. Uh, y'all are awesome. And uh, let's just let's just get in the word together. But um, you know, one more example, real quick. Just when I said uh, the pantry, I, I, uh, I was reminded. You know, Allison used to be the anointed one at my parents' house. It was kind of funny. She would go through their entire pantry and their refrigerator and find all the expired food and throw it away. And we would laugh, like, what is the oldest can she could find or whatever? And now uh, Anna, is that anointing is on Anna. So when the Bunt Rocks go, go over and see their, you know, little Anna sees her grandparents, that's what she does. And so uh, it's just, a, it's it's kind of a laughing a uh, funny thing in our home. And so like that food used to be good. It used to taste, you know, it used to taste wonderful. Like when, whenever that, that ingredient, maybe it was part of my dad's uh, gumbo that he makes every year. That's just out of this world, you know, um, you know, it used to be good. And so like the, the manna from heaven, remember they used to have to gather it daily. And so it's really dangerous to try to live on yesterday's revelation or yesterday's, um, uh, 
you know, the promises of God are yes and amen, but we, we, we're, we grow from faith to faith and glory to glory. And so there better be some fresh revelation happening in your heart. Uh, and that can start tonight. I'm telling you, it, uh, each and every day, God is doing something fresh. He's doing something new in your life. And so if we skip our time with God, we're going to skip what he's doing and how he's moving uh, throughout our lives and through our lives. And so you might miss something really critical when you miss your prayer time. And so um, let's just, with that in mind, let's open up God's word. We're going to start in Psalm 25, and this is one of David's Psalms. And he's saying in verse 14, he's going to read out of the Amplified Classic version, Lee. Uh, Psalm 25, 14 in the Amplified. It says, the secret of the sweet, satisfying companionship of the Lord have they who fear, revere, and worship him, and he will show them his covenant and reveal to them its deep inner meaning. Amen? And so um, there's a secret that, that the Lord has just for you, uh, and he's revealing it to those that, are, that fear him, revere him, and worship him. And I, I just... As a worshiper and as a musician, um, I just, that's how I connect with, with God. And so I know that there are other ways, but that's probably my number one way. Yes, I can pray in tongues and receive revelation, but when, there's something about uh, the ability to play an instrument and worship him and get before God's throne that changes me. I'm not trying to change God. God's not the one changing. That, God's not the one that needs changing. It's me. Uh, everybody say, I, <laughs> I need to change. And the, the person looking back in the mirror is the one that needs to change. My soul, my soul. You know, and so, uh, so there are, are deep inner meanings of God's covenant that he reveals to those that revere and worship him. It's, it's really that simple. In verse 15, uh, maybe you're facing difficulty. It, he goes on to say, my eyes are ever toward the Lord. You know, if you look up, that's where your help is coming from. It's coming from the Lord, for he will pluck my feet out of the net. There's no uh, temptation, test, or trial that has you snared. The devil uh, cannot win. He has no authority over you. And there's no sin and there's no sickness. There's no disease that can uh, hold you captive. Tonight, there's freedom in the name of Jesus. And so let's just... You know, this is kind of Old Testament, right? This is David uh, uh, speaking in, in, in Psalm 25 that we just read. Uh, but he had a spirit of revelation uh, moving in him. Again, it's Old Testament, so he didn't have the Holy Spirit living on the inside. But he was a worshiper. What did he do? He got on his harp before the Lord, and he worshiped the Lord. He was faithful to the Lord. He was faithful to look after his father's sheep all those years, uh, you know, out in the fields, and protecting those sheep. And so uh, he took his job seriously and he hungered after God. The Bible says that he was a man after God's own heart. And so we, we can learn some things about the secrets that were revealed to David and that he reveals to us through the book of Psalm, uh, Psalms. So uh, uh, the, the secret of the Lord releases his power. There's power inside the secrets that he has for you. And so we can receive those secrets by waiting on the Lord. And so <clears throat> let's jump to the New Testament now. We'll jump back to the Old Testament later on for another example. And then I'll kinda, I've got some points for you of how to access the secret and kind of keep, uh, keep the secret things in front of us and that revelation pouring into us, right? And so... Um, Let's read out of 1 Corinthians chapter 2, starting in verse 6. Again, in the Amplified Classic, I think I'm starting to, uh, yeah, this is a, uh, the right verse. Yet, <clears throat> when we are among the full grown, the spiritually mature Christians, uh, we do impact a higher wisdom. Oh, I'm sorry, impart a higher wisdom, the knowledge of the divine plan previously hidden, but it is indeed not a wisdom of this present age or of this world, nor of the leaders and rulers of this age. In other words, uh, th the kind of secrets that we're talking about tonight that are being revealed spirit to spirit, you know, God's spirit is revealing those to your spirit, your spirit on the inside 
when you crave, when you hunger after everything that God has for you, I'm telling you, he will meet you wherever you are. And so uh, as you draw near to God, God draws near to you. And so when we're among those uh, full grown, spiritually mature, uh, we're imparting a higher wisdom. In other words, uh, uh, God's going to be able to impart a higher level of wisdom through you as you surround yourself with mature people because iron sharpens iron. And so... uh, but the, the, this wisdom doesn't come out of the natural realm, out of the realm that, that's, that's uh, around us in the world. Uh, this, it says uh, this present age or of this world, not of the leaders and rulers of this age who are bringing brought, uh, being brought to nothing and are doomed to pass away. You know, Joe Biden is doomed to pass away. Hunter Biden, you know, all of the money laundering that's going on between uh, Joe Biden and his son Hunter, all of that is going to pass away. The knowledge of it's not going to pass away. We're going to all that's going to uh, come out in the open, and it's going to stink to high heaven, right? But I'm telling you, uh, their their leadership is all going to pass away, and it's not eternal. And only th- what what is eternal will last, and it's only what is eternal that matters. And so we better be focused on the secrets that God's revealing to us spirit to spirit and be gaining that revelation in order to go to the next level in God and not be left behind and not be lacking in wisdom. It says in verse 7, but rather what, what we are setting forth is a wisdom of God once hidden and now revealed to us by God that wisdom which God devised and decreed before the ages of our glorification. None of the rulers of this age or world perceived or recognized or understood it, or they wouldn't have crucified the Lord. But on the contrary, uh, as the scripture says, what eye has not seen or ear has not heard has not entered into the heart of man. All that God has prepared made and keeps ready. He, he is keeping it ready just for you. It's hot off the presses just for you, for those who love him, who hold him in affectionate rev- reverence, promptly obeying him and gratefully recognizing the benefits he has beso- bestowed. Amen. And then it goes on to talk about God uh, revealing him through uh, those things through his spirit. Uh, for the Spirit searches diligently, exploring and examining everything, even sounding the profound and bottomless things of God. For what person perceives what passes through a man's thoughts except the man's own spirit? So you're going to have that revealed to your spirit and you can know the deep uh, thoughts of God and the will of God. Uh, uh, faith is it, the the, the Entrance of God's word uh, gives us light. And I'm telling you, you can know the thoughts of God by spending time with him. And that's where he reveals to you uh, what his will is. Amen. And so uh, I wanted to read out of Ephesians 1, 9 now. um, In the Amplified, again, Brother Lee. So Ephesians 1, we're starting at verse 9. Uh, making known to us the mystery or the secret of his will, of his plan, of his purpose. And it is this in accordance with his good pleasure, his merciful intention, which he had previously purposed and set forth in him. In other words, <clears throat> here we are in Ephesians 1. This is a few, uh, few verses before uh, the Ephesians 1 prayer begins. And I just encourage you, whatever, you know, it's really good in the NLT. It's really good in... Um, Obviously, the King James and the New King James, but uh, the NLT, the Passion are both really good. This is the Amplified. It's also really good. It just, you know, getting in Ephesians 1 and, and, and uh, pulling the mysteries, the secrets of what Paul is revealing to us are all in Christ. And so in verse 11, in him, we were also made God's heritage, his portion, and we obtained an inheritance. Thank God for that inheritance. What, are you, what part of that inheritance are you leaving behind tonight? What part uh, do you see a, a, a piece of your life that's lacking in wisdom or lacking in that inheritance that you uh, can go after and dive after and, and grab a hold of and grab a hold of God's faithfulness and pull that into your life and begin uh, to apply that in your life? Amen. 
uh, <clears throat> who foreordained in accordance with his purpose, I'm still in verse 11, who works out everything in agreement with the counsel and design for his own will, so that we who first hoped in Christ, who first put our confidence in him, have been destined and appointed to live for the praise of his glory. Again, that's, that's re referring back to verse nine, for his good pleasure. We live for the praise of his glory. And so uh, thank God for his glory, that his manifested presence and his goodness can be revealed to us and be manifested in our lives on a daily basis, that we're carriers of that glory, all for his pleasure, all to please him. Amen. And so um, I have one more scripture. I think I'm going to, to go straight to it, though, just because, because of time. We still have plenty of time. I just want to get to my points. Uh, Colossians 4, uh, verse 2, be earnest and un unwearied and steadfast in your prayer life, being both alert and intent in your praying with thanksgiving. It's always so good, you know, we're talking about having a better prayer life. We're talking about really uh, seeking the Lord and spending time with God where he can reveal the, his secrets to you that he has planned for you. Amen. And it's done in our prayer time, uh, unwearied and steadfast and consistent. In other words, uh, you know, it's, it's something that we do every day, but it's never without thanksgiving. It's always, I always begin my time with the Lord just in lifting up in thanksgiving, even, even in singing, I'm, I'm singing my thanksgiving up to the Lord. And so there's no such thing as unexpressed thanks or unexpressed praise. It, it, this haps, has to happen by moving your mouth. It can't just be something on the inside. Yeah, you can be in the middle of an important meeting at work and you can you know, begin to pray on the inside without it coming out your mouth. But at some point, that thanksgiving better come out of your mouth. Amen. <clears throat> and at the same time, verse three, and at the same time, pray for us also uh, that God may open a door to us for the word or the gospel to, pro to proclaim the mystery concerning Christ on account of which I am in prison. So this, this uh, obviously is Paul uh, writing in Colossians chapter four, and he's in the, in the middle of prison, you know, chains, completely bound. Can you imagine? And he's still concerned about uh, the, the uh, Colossians church. And so uh, verse four, that I may proclaim it fully, the mystery, right? That I may proclaim it fully and make it clear, speak boldly and unfold that mystery as is my duty. You know, it's my duty as well. Did you know it's your duty as well? Uh, you know, it, it's something that you, that we are called to do as Christians is to open our mouths and share the truth. And so, uh, the mystery that he's talking about here in Colossians is that, uh, that is the mystery of the gospel, that the gospel was not just for the Jew, the Jews, but also the Gentiles and that's us. And so we have a, an important place uh, um, important part to play in the kingdom of God. And we know that. And so, um, so, you know, when, when we glean together in moments like this and in church on Sundays, um, there's an explosion of revelation that happens uh, that imparts into our lives. And so um, it's really important that we write it down, that we, that we chronicleize, chronicle what the Lord is saying to us in church and then go back and study those notes and, and allow the word to water itself into your, into your heart, you know, uh, so that do not neglect the watering process of the word. And so it's never like, oh, I heard that before. Or, hey, I was really listening on Sunday. I don't need to listen to that again. You know, you can, it, our podcast is so simple now. It just automatically downloads and it's so easy for you to go back and listen to last Sunday's message, uh, especially la uh, this past Sunday, uh, healing rules. Uh, my dad preached about healing. And so just if you're fighting something in your body, I would not take that for granted. I would listen to that over and over and over again. And I really would 
uh, inoculate yourself against the devil and, uh, and against his strategies to distract you and to b- bring you down with sickness. We've been redeemed uh, from sickness and, and inf- all infirmities have, have uh, no hold of, on us in Jesus' name, right? And so uh, in Christ unlocks all the wisdom and knowledge that we need uh, and, but it's here in, in a moment like this that we receive it, that, like I said, there's that explosion that's happening. And so I just have a few points tonight on accessing this secret. And so number one, it was uh, spending time with God. We talked a lot about that already, spending time with God. And so uh, I might get my Bible just in case I, I quote them. But over in Exodus 33, you don't have to put it up, Lee, I just... Um, you have, you have Moses here and, and he eventually, uh, in 34 is when he, the, 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 the 10 commandments, he goes before the Lord and, uh, writes out the 10 commandments, spending so much time in God's presence. But in, in, uh, verse 33, it starts with, with God forming a cleft of the rock and placing uh, Moses in it and walking by, right? And so uh, it was it was out of Moses's time that that was very special. Here it is, the Old Testament, right? And so um, to look at God himself with his own eyes would uh, would kill Moses. He was not able to receive that much glory. And so he had to you know turn his face towards the rock. And God, I mean, God just walked by and he, he was just able to see just a little bit of God. And so after that time, when he came up down from the mountain, his face was glowing with the presence and the glory of God. And so uh, when you spend time with God, I know this is Old Testament, but still, when you spend time with God, it ought to be obvious that you're a carrier of his glory, that you've just like plugged in to all the power and you filled up with all the power that, that you need to conquer the devil and to conquer all of the issues uh, that are happening in your, in your life on a daily basis. And so we have a supply. God's given us a supply. <clears throat> and with that anointing comes a supply of money as well. Uh, and so that's, that's funding the gospel and it's funding, uh, it's getting you out of debt. There is supernatural uh, things happening in your finances, even right now as we're preaching, right? And so uh, we, we look at what, Mo- what happened to Moses in the presence of God. It was obvious to all of those people. It was, it was completely obvious. It, it, the, the glory of God was all, all, and he had to put a veil back over his face because he was shining so brightly for the Lord. And I know that's the Old Testament, but I'm telling you, uh, in the New Testament, we have a better covenant founded upon better promises. And so our Holy Spirit, the, our spirit on the inside, rather, is illuminated uh, by the revelation coming from the Holy Spirit. So it happens, this revelation spirit to spirit, like I've said multiple times tonight. So moving on to number two is to stay in the spiritual realm as much as we can. Yes, we, we, we can be too... Uh, so heavenly minded that we're not any earthly good. And that, that is true. There's a balance to what I'm say, saying, but I'm telling you with all of the ways that we have to dis, to, that the devil has to distract us and pull us out of, uh, of our calling and of God's will. Um, I'm telling you, it's, it's good to stay in the spiritual realm. So uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 17 um, I could quote it, but let's just read it. <clears throat> Talking about, you know, being, being a new creature. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation, a new form of being that never existed before. Old things have passed away and behold, all things, all things, all things have become new. So that word new it means uh, fresh. The, the word means new in regard to form or uh, quality rather than new in reference to time. So, so it's a brand new, fresh thing that he's doing in your life. All, everything is new. 
We're not holding on to any part of the past. We're not hanging on to any thought from the past. We're not hanging on to any of our old ways of doing things. Every single thing in our life is fresh and has been made new by the Holy Spirit. And so we're a new creation uh, designed to understand, understand the things of the Spirit and to operate in a brand new realm. It's not a natural realm. <clears throat> yes, the supernatural pours into the natural. That's one of my favorite things uh, that, that w- when we get to see the supernatural, when we get to see something that we've been believing God for for so long, boom, it, it, ha- it just breaks out on the right and breaks out on the left. Man, I don't know about you, but that, that stirs me up. And so as believers... We're designed to function in that spiritual realm. So again, number two is to stay in the spiritual realm. So, you know, that's where your blessing is, but that's where your victory is. Your victory is in the spiritual realm. So, so stop trying to fight it on your own in the natural realm with natural weapons or with natural thoughts. Or maybe if I, uh, you know, like maybe if I told my boss this, or maybe if I told Cindy Lou over here that and 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 let me you know let me daydream about this a little bit longer no there's a strategy from heaven that God has ex- exactly for that situation that you're facing right now and you're going to access that strategy through and only through the spiritual realm and so bring it to the father i just encourage you bring it bring whatever situation you know um I deal a lot with IT issues, solving people's computer problems and, and or server problems or whatever. And, and I'm tempted all the time to go to Google first or go, you know, search it out my, myself first. Uh, but, you know, every time there's a strategy God shows me, it, it, it's like unlocking a door that's, that's never been opened to me before when I bring it to him first, you know, in every area, God is going to, he's smarter than any, than anybody on earth. His, his ways are higher and we can tap into his ways and we don't have to waste time uh, uh, beating our head against the wall, doing the wrong thing. Uh, I don't know about you, but I, I find it frustrating to face the same challenge over and over and over again and forget how, how I solved that that challenge from the first time, right? Uh, that happens to me a lot. I don't know, especially like again in IT stuff. It's like, oh, so and so had that problem a year ago. What, what what was the? How did I fix that? So, you know, it when we access it in the spiritual realm, there's our victory. Amen. And so uh, number three is to make it. So so accessing this secret is to make it your life's aim. So. Jesus said in John 6.63, let's just turn over to John 6.63. It's, I could just quote it, but I want to get it in front of me. That blessed me just now. I, I was able to expound a word in my notes in my Bible, right? So <clears throat> this is Jesus talking and it says, it is the spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. And so we need to make it our life's aim to live by the Spirit. One word from God can pull you out of the natural arena. One word from God. You're you're stuck thinking about something in the natural, and all you need is one word from God in the supernatural realm, in the spiritual realm, to break you out, to break you through. Amen? And that happens only in the spiritual realm, like we just said in in point number two. So make it our life's aim to live in the spirit. For it is in the spirit who gives life to flesh, profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. So the word of God is spirit and the word of God is our life. And uh, thank God for his word. His word is now. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. It It can pierce and divide uh, flesh from the spirit, you know, God's will from, from, uh, from a mess. Right. And you can just get right down. You can use God's word as a dividing line and just split open that situation that you're facing right now. You don't have to struggle with it. You don't have to lose sleep over it. You don't have to fear and worry and 
bite all your fingernails off. That would be helpful for me. My fingernails are too long to play the guitar right now. I need to cut them. But anyways, maybe I should start chewing on. No, I'm just kidding. But, you know, we need to make it our life's aim. And so um, I'm going to wrap it up tonight. But in number four um, is, wait, I, I, I left, you know, know that with God, all things are possible. And so I wanted to find way down in Luke 1. It's almost Christmas time, right? My dad will probably preach this around Christmas. And in verse uh, 30, let's see if I can find it. In the 35, 135. And the angel answered to Mary, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also that Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. And so here Mary uh, was, get, was, was not yet pregnant with, with Jesus, but like she was all confused on how in the world could this possibly happen uh, it, that, that I was going to become pregnant with, it, supernaturally. Well, uh, with God, all things are possible. And so what did she do? As soon as the angel told her the word of God. So this, this, the angel spoke words right, right from God. She grabbed a hold of that in faith and she relaxed and she, and she, uh, she was all about God's word. And so she, there was no more fear. There was no more worry about what are people going to say? What are people going to think? I'm going to be pregnant before, like, so then, you know, uh, not by human means, like that, they're going to throw me out of church. No, like she, as soon as, as the word of God was spoken, she grabbed a hold of it with all of her faith. And so uh, she knew that the angel's promise would come to pass as the, whatever the Holy Spirit said, because the Holy Spirit was going to come upon her. The Holy Spirit uh, is what takes the impossible and pulls it into the possible, Right. The Holy Spirit uh, breathes so much life. I mean, the words of God are life. They're spirit and they are life. So we need to grab a hold of what the Holy Spirit is saying. You know, we need to grab a hold of God's word, but what the Holy Spirit is revealing to your spirit is the word of God, amen? And so grab a hold of it with both hands and, and, and don't let it go. And so, uh, <clears throat> you know, I, was, I have a Smith Wigglesworth quote here. It says, uh, you will do more in one year if you're really filled with the Holy Spirit than you could do in 50 years apart from him. You know, just one year filled with the Holy Spirit, you can accomplish way more than a lifetime without being filled with the Spirit. And so it's so important to just lean on being filled with the Spirit, praying in other tongues, allowing the Holy Spirit to lead, guide, and direct us. Amen. Amen. 